Hi, my name is Anna, and every week I summarize a book for you to give you the strategies you need to thrive as a family without having to spend your precious time reading a book. And if you are enjoying these videos, please subscribe to my channel, like and comment on these videos. Engagement is what helps promote my work here on YouTube, and I really do appreciate it. Today, I will be discussing No Bad Kids by Janet Lansbury. This book is a collection of Janet's most popular articles about common toddler behaviors, and how respectful parenting practices can be applied to benefit both parents and children. And I highly recommend you check out Janet's podcast as well as her blog, where she answers questions that are being sent to her by parents. These are great resources for finding advice on specific scenarios that you are struggling with with your kids. Resources that have helped me immensely in my parenting journey. Janet Lansbury is a parenting expert that follows the Rye parenting philosophy, resources for infant educators. And at its core, there is this belief. As soon as they're born, children are whole people who are capable, not just adorable passive blobs. They blossom, change, develop and mature, but the whole person is already there. They already have their own ideas, talents and passions. Instead of seeing our job as giving our children everything, showing them everything and teaching them everything, our job becomes building a relationship with this person and getting to know this person and facilitating this person. There are so many words to say exactly the same thing these days, but to me, this is exactly what positive, respectful parenting is. First, we will discuss what makes the toddler years so intense. Then we will discuss the importance of setting boundaries. And then we will go through specific guidelines that we can take to foster a strong, positive relationship with our child. Let's start with understanding toddlers. As you may recall from the book summary that I did on No Drama Discipline, toddlers are operating from an immature prefrontal cortex, which means that they do not have the ability to think rationally and clearly yet. And on top of that, they are also dealing with intense emotions from a well-developed primitive brain, which is where the emotions come from. So they are easily overwhelmed by impulses and emotions that are bigger and stronger than they are. The author deeply believes that there are no bad kids, just impressionable, conflicted young people wrestling with emotions and impulses and trying to communicate their feelings and their needs the only way they know how. So it is crucial to adjust our expectations and understand that it is their job to push our limits and completely developmentally appropriate. The second year is often described as the terrible twos, but two-year-olds aren't terrible, they are just torn. As much as they appear to want to be in charge, the reality of that power is frightening and can severely undermine their sense of security. They feel this pull to assert themselves as individuals and are seeking answers to important questions like, am I safe and cared for? Is it okay to want what I want? To feel what I feel? Do I have confident leaders? A toddler acting out is not shameful and it is not a behavior that needs punishing. It can be a cry for attention or a way for your child to tell you that they are hungry or that they're tired. It can be a call to action for firmer, more consistent limits. It has the overwhelming impulse to step out of bounds whilst also desperately needing to know that he is securely reined in. So when children act out, the author is telling us that we can imagine them holding a little red flag saying, stop me, help me, rein me in. Young children are actually self-healing geniuses. Sometimes it is an expression of their immediate discomfort like fatigue or hunger, but other times it is just that they have a backlog of internalized feelings that they need to release. I'm sure you've experienced this, but sometimes with toddlers, no matter what you do, they seem to deliberately and unreasonably push us to our limits. Because if we hold steady with clear and firm boundaries, they will be able to release all these emotions that they have trapped in their body. So it helps to think that sometimes the best thing you can do is to stop trying to appease them and just let them express those emotions because they have to come out. So this brings us to the next part of the importance of boundaries. One of the main messages of the book is that often a lot of behavioral issues stem from how we go about discipline. Children absolutely need boundaries, and the author goes as far as saying that lack of discipline is not kindness, it is neglect. The most common issues when it comes to discipline is that we are either not setting limits early enough or not following through. And children need to know without a doubt that their parents are in charge. And when we don't make that clear by setting reasonable and consistent limits, 
our children have no choice but to feel out of control. And this creates a vicious cycle where this out of control feeling creates more out of control behavior, which then makes us parents feel out of control. Children need lots of opportunities to be autonomous and have their choices respected, but at the same time, they also need to know that they're not in charge. And we let them know that through our confident, decisive and gentle leadership. There is this misconception that gentle, non-punitive parenting means avoiding confrontation with our child and forgetting our own needs. But parenting is the development of an extremely vital relationship between two people, and it will be the model of all future relationships for our child. And because any relationship takes two, it's very important to understand that our own needs and feelings are just as important as our child's. And we need to enjoy spending time with our child. When we forget about our own needs and our own feelings, we end up feeling annoyed, angry, and resentful. So in order to develop a positive and balanced relationship with our child, they need to learn early that we will do our best to give them everything they need, but that sometimes they can't get what they want, and that's okay. We need to get comfortable with disagreeing with each other. So now let's take a look at some guidelines suggested by the author. The first one is that we should begin with a predictable environment and realistic expectations. A predictable daily routine allows a baby to anticipate what is expected of him. It is actually the beginning of discipline. And of course, we must be taking our toddlers to run errands with us sometimes, but we must realize that we can't expect them to be at their best behavior at dinner parties, on long afternoons at the shopping center, or if their days are overloaded with schedule activities. And we can also make it easier for our child not to irritate us by making off-limits items unavailable to them. This is why safe and closed play spaces are invaluable. The second guideline is that we should use direct, honest, and first-person communication. Parents often get into the habit of calling themselves mommy or daddy, but toddlers test boundaries to clarify the rules. So when we say, mommy doesn't want Emma to hit the dog, we are not giving them the clear direction that they need. And we shouldn't just say no either. We need to clearly explain by saying something like, I won't let you hit the dog, it hurts. We should avoid baby talk and speak in full sentences so that we are modeling the language that we want our child to adopt. And as a rule of thumb, we shouldn't say things that we wouldn't say to another adult, like listening ears or inside voices. The third guideline is that we should avoid tricks like playfulness, timers, distractions, or ignoring as forms of managing tantrums because the author feels that these are not respectful, and they also assume that the child is not a capable human being. We often underestimate how smart and capable our young children are, and they can actually often see through our tactics. There are a few respectful things that we can do, like always trying to give the choice between two options, for example. And there are a lot of great advice from the book summary that I did on how to talk so little kids will listen. So I will leave a link up here if you wanted to take a look. The fourth guideline is that we should make it a habit to acknowledge feelings. Because here is the paradox. The more we welcome our child's displeasure, the happier everyone will be in the house. Children need rules for behavior, but their emotional responses to the limit we set, or to anything else for that matter, needs to be allowed and even encouraged. Encouraging the expression of feelings and acknowledging them is the key to our child's emotional health and sense of self-worth. So the author is telling us that we should delete from our parenting job description the responsibilities to soothe, correct, or control our child's emotions, and replace them with accept, acknowledge, and support. As a parent, this simple shift has been so freeing because I realize that I don't need to do anything to make my child's feelings go away. I just need to sit with them. And often acknowledging our child's point of view can be magically calming for them because it gives them the feeling of being understood. The fifth guideline is that we should respond in the moment and calmly. This is what the author calls staying unruffled. When setting limits, the emotional state of the parent almost always dictates the child's reactions. So if we lack confidence and clarity, if we lose our temper or are unsure, frazzled or frustrated, our child will sense it and it will very likely lead to more undesirable behavior. And finding the right tone to set limits can take a bit of practice. And the author suggests that we can imagine ourselves either as a CEO or as a superhero. 
Because if you are a CEO, you wouldn't use an unsure, questioning tone, get angry or emotional. You would lead with confidence and efficiency. And this is exactly what our child needs. Our child needs to feel that we are not nervous about his behavior or ambivalent about the rules. Our child needs to know that we are effortlessly in charge. And this is an important point because you may have noticed that with your own children, but they can feel our feelings more than our words, which is why sometimes you might be saying the right thing, but because you don't have the right tone, it just doesn't work. So a simple matter of fact, I won't let you do that. If you throw that again, I will take it away. While blocking the behavior with our hands is the best response. But we also need to react immediately. Once the moment has passed, we need to wait for the next one. The last guideline is that we should use as much as possible natural consequences rather than disconnected punishments like tamads, which don't make sense to the child. Natural consequences are direct logical consequences of an action that happens in the moment. So for example, if your child is throwing food or walking away from the dinner table, her meal time is over. Or if a child refuses to get dressed, then we don't go to the park today. Or if they refuse to put their pyjama on before going to bed, then we won't have time to read a book. Your child may still very likely react negatively to the consequence, but he won't feel manipulated or shamed. And setting limits like this without punishment works. And it works so beautifully that you will need to set fewer and fewer limits, especially when the toddler years have passed. And I've experienced this firsthand with my kids. All three examples that I've just provided from Janet, I've used them with my kids and they work a treat. The very important point though, is that you always need to follow through on the consequence. You may need to follow through once or twice and your child won't be happy about it, but you won't need to do it again. That's it for today. Here is a summary of the book so you can take a screenshot on your phone. And if you have enjoyed this video, please leave me a like and please leave me a comment and introduce yourself. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and keep growing.